so today we're going to deal with inflation 1.1 an extremely critically important topic for upsc preparation and life in general you will read almost on a daily basis there is some mention of inflation or price rises or onion prices have increased or pyaaz mehanga ho gaya and something like that and government are worried and literally shaking so you should know the basics of inflation because it will help you in upsc answering both prelims as well as mains presented by me roman saini and this is an academy where you are watching all these cool videos anyway i'm just trying to impart high quality accessible education and if you want to know more you can read online please 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 spread the word of this education revolution and if you have any doubt or any query or any request for a particular video to be made by me please comment below the video on youtube or on the facebook this is the facebook url so all of you are aware about this terminology inflation okay so basically i'll deal with basic introduction in layman's term sometimes inflation is synonymous with price rise but that is not true uh, the causes may differ and it is much more elaborative economic concept this is just a lay term but anyway inflation can be defined as a general rise in prices of goods and services in a particular economy it might happen that in india inflation is 10% but in usa it may be just 2% in eu it may be even 0% somewhere it may be as high as 1000% you just don't know what kind of inflation you can see it depends upon that particular economy in certain circumstances you will see demand pull inflation how do you remember that just remember dimple uh, because it helps in mcq d for demand and pull for pull uh, it helps uh, these are very stupid mnemonics but it will help you trust me it helped me a lot too much money chasing too few goods this is how most of the teacher will describe it this is a typical example of demand pull inflation i'll tell you what it is and this is the one which can be tackled easily with monetary policies so rbi or any central bank for that matter if it tweaks the monetary policies it has a direct impact on demand pull inflation but what happens with developing nations like there is various cost push sides supply side determinants like let's say if there is increase in oil prices so production will obviously decrease supply side will suffer and you, there is nothing you can do about it you do not have necessary technology so your supply side cannot match uh, the demand so these constraints they are usually cannot be tackled by just money just by monetary policy tackling they are also called as supply shock inflation and there are constraints from supply side measures okay and the general statement which you should know and which you should write in all your essays and essay type exam answers in paper 3 is that inflation leads to erosion of purchasing power of money this is the reason why 100 rupees uh, today let's say in september 2015 is not the same rather it is obviously less than the 100 rupees in let's say october of 2015 even in one month the power of money will decrease because of inflation if there was no inflation the power will be exactly the same so in this introductory video we will talk about how it works with the demand pull inflation so obviously all the economic students worth it all knows this is the price and this is the quantity which has been demanded uh this is a typical downward sloping curve and this is called as basic microeconomic principle this is called as demand curve obviously as you know as the quantity demanded increases price tends to decrease this is a general principle but now imagine uh, government regime has changed or taxation for example in make in india campaign we have reduced the corporate tax from 30% to 25% so now imagine uh, for this particular price the quantity demanded was this much but now uh since quantity demanded will be more because you have more disposable income so something like that will happen let's say this quantity has shifted from here to here and now you will see that price has to be increased accordingly if the supply cannot match it so price will come somewhere here so now the new curve which you will draw will be something like this so as you can see demand has pulled demand has pulled it and that is why it is called as demand uh, pull inflation i hope you got this point and this is also called as rightward shift of the demand curve similarly it can be explained for the supply side curve as well but that will be cost push inflation so this was the basic diagram anyway moving forward so these are some related terms which you'll encounter a lot uh, like stagflation slow down then it will be followed by recession then depression disinflation deflation reflation misery index and finally phillips curve so we will tackle one by one in this introductory video so let's start with stagflation stagflation is nothing but if just two words combined unemployment plus inflation and both have a extremely high rate so inflation is also high unemployment is also high 
in these two terms the entire definition is finished this is all for gyan bazi but anyway <laughs> situation in an economy when inflation and unemployment both are at high levels and this is seen especially this counters what is called as phillips curve this is an exact counter of phillips curve i'll teach you what is phillips curve so this is exception to phillips curve phillips curve is only valid in short run anyway we will uh, deal with it in the last so inflation is continuing for a long period okay and it affects the input prices okay plus it also affects the demand for goods and services what will lead to it will not only lead to inflation increasing but since the input prices are affected so wages will not be able to provide it at the same level so unemployment rate will increase so stagflation is nothing but high inflation plus high unemployment and in simple terms it can refer to persistent high inflation combined with high unemployment and stagnant demand in a country's economy now you, if you can't have employment the wages will go down and the demand will also stagnate and this will become a vicious cycle so this was stagflation in basic introductory terms so after stagflation we will deal with deflation and disinflation so i'll tell you very very in simple terms just figure uh, see this graph so let's say this price of a banana is 10 rupees here so if this price goes up let's say this becomes let's say 12 rupees or 13 rupees so this is because of inflation okay now if it is sustained at 13 rupees but again it becomes 11 rupees so the rate of inflation has come down now this particular thing is called as disinflation okay and let's assume if it falls below 10 rupees the original price and it becomes let's say 9 or 8 rupees then this becomes what is called as deflation is that understood so this is deflation deflation is exact opposite of inflation deflation is decrease in the prices so complete opposite or reverse of inflation because there is fall in the general price levels over a period of time and when the inflation rate falls below 0% that is negative inflation rate is deflation while disinflation is a slow down in the inflation rate so as you see in asian uh, crisis you of 1997 a similar phenomena was observed so in hong kong uh, it was uh, seen in the form of deflation and it continued till the year 2004 is that understood so this was certain example and in simple terms you can say that uh, the falling prices it occurs when output of goods and services it increases much much more than what the volume of money in the economy is present so this is a complicated definition but i explained you in the as simple terms as possible now moving forward what is slow down slow down is a very very basic very very layman's term which means any decline in economic activity so if you are uh, like basically your demand is decreasing or supply is decreasing or in general your growth is decreasing a decline in economic activity which affects everything around it this is called a slow down this is a very very basic definition now it is slow down is usually followed by recession if not controlled okay now continued slow down will lead to recession and continuous recession will result into depression so this is a basically cycle slow down leading to recession leading to depression okay now what is recession recession is a situation when there is negative growth rate see Uh, in case of usa the growth rate is 1 to 2% roughly speaking in case of india the growth rate in last 5 years has been around 6% something like that but it is still increasing so if we have 100 rupees it increases by 1% so it becomes 101 so the growth rate is positive what if the grow your 100 rupees become 99 your gdp was 100 uh, billion dollars it becomes 99 then it is a negative growth rate when these negative growth rates are seen in two successive quarters for example between january and march of 2015 if you compare it with the same quarter of last year and you see a negative growth rate and this is followed in again in april to june 2015 a vis a vis 2014 quarter so in two successive quarters then you you are set to enter into a recession i hope it is clear now so some of the indicators of recession include like slow down in the economy there is investment usually falls fis take their money away there is no fdi investment people usually don't invest they tend to invest uh, less then there is fall in the output of the economy so these are all indicators of recession and it's a very vicious cycle unless acted upon uh, and in simpler terms it is a period of temporary economic decline where trade and industrial activity reduced they are reduced to a bare minimum and it is generally identified by fall of gdp in two successive quarters so this is another definition of the same thing so i hope recession is clear now now what is depression see depression like in psychological terms it is an extreme form of something okay 
so you may feel uh, your mood is off some day but if it is persist for too long it can result into depression so similarly in economics also if recession continues for too long and it can lead to depression of the economy everything is synonymous with 1930s depression that was the first time a large scale massive depression was seen started with us of a united states of america uh, successive years of recession can lead to depression this is a rule of thumb uh, this is how we define depression and some of the indicators of depression include like huge fall in demand so in recession you are seeing fall in demand there is huge fall in demand so take it to extreme basically and if there is huge fall in demand so obviously consumption will also see a lot of fall and business confidence is at ultra low morale is down and all this leads to decreased investment in business and eventually there will be decline in output of the economy so basically it's a very very vicious cycle and one of the example obviously i have told you 1930s great depression of usa it is also spread to other parts of the world it was not limited to usa now depression in simpler terms long and severe recession in an economy or a market so this was depression for you in short now what is inflation spiral see it's a very very interesting phenomena i'll explain you how so what happens is this is also called as wage price spiral so for example your demand has increased okay your demand of the goods increased because your wages are high so you will tend to meet this demand by increasing the prices of the good now the prices of the good are more so you the wages the workers will demand more wages so you have to increase the wages again it will pull the demand up again the prices will be increased then this becomes a vicious cycle it becomes a trilogy of increased demand leading to increased prices leading to increased wages so this is basically called as wage price spiral okay so basically in definition terms because we need it for mains exam an inflationary situation in an economy because it occurs because the process of wage and price interaction as you as i have told you wages press prices up and prices pull wages up so this is an inflationary spiral and can explain the first uh, the inflation which occurred because of this spiral was in 1935 in the us of a economy now what is reflation so reflation is a situation what happens is like let's say your economy is in deflation okay and now it's a vicious cycle what is a vicious cycle it is a positive feedback loop and it will go on increasing increasing in intensity so now government will go and it will increase its expenditure it will increase the subsidy it will put money in the people's hand it will increase the money supply in the economy it will reduce the tax rates so by combining these features what will happen is the money the purchasing power of the economy the people will increase and it will lead to reduction in unemployment because now wages can be provided and obviously demand will increase when wages increases and it will lead to revival of economy so in simpler terms revival of economy by higher public expenditure tax cuts interest rate cuts by the government is reflation so in a very very standard definition is act of stimulating economy by increasing the money supply again this is the keyword by increasing the money supply or by reducing taxes which obviously will lead to increase in money supply this is one and the same thing seeking to bring the economy and uh, back to the long term trend that is the positive growth rate and reduction in deflation this is usually followed after a dip in the business cycle to revive the public sentiment so this was reflation for you in basic introductory terms now what is excessive reflation now what happens is see fiscal deficit will rise because government is expending expending like crazy tax rates are also reducing so revenue is also decreased so deficit will increase because your expenditure is going down revenue is uh, expenditure is going up revenue is going down so deficit will widen okay so extra money is printed for this purposes as we have seen in case of zimbabwe uh, it went all out it printed even 1 trillion dollar type of notes and it lead to hyper inflationary condition so see it is the like ultra reverse of what is happening same thing happened in case of germany after world war 1 so people used to burn their currency to make tea if you don't know the story you can read about mark that is their currency back then anyway it is generally printed at very higher level of growth okay wages will increase and but there is no improvement in unemployment is that understood because the grow fiscal deficit is uh, fiscal deficit is continually rising so basically when economy is crossing a cycle of recession this is another angle of putting uh, the definition of reflation and when government takes some economic policies and there are cert certain goods will see sudden and temporary increase in their prices so this is again a type of reflation so we should tend to uh, government should tend to avoid excessive in any domain 
now misery index uh, this was created by arthur ocon this is not very important but just i thought i'll mention it basically when you add the unemployment rate to inflation rate this is again a uh, combination of phillips curve different things basically you're giving an index to it and when a higher both a higher rate of unemployment and worsening of inflation it will lead to some socio economic cost for a country you don't need to delve into that too much but just remember there is some concept called misery index in case if it is asked in pt or mains then at least you have some clue now finally for today we have the phillips curve uh, see uh, phillips curve is a very very simple curve i'll draw it right here what happens with phillips curve is it's a basically something like this a curve will appear so this is basically called as a one x is inversely proportional to y so as x increases y decreases this is a typical curve none will approach to zero so this is unemployment here and this is inflation so as you can see when inflation is very high unemployment is at a very very low level okay but when you see when inflation is very very low unemployment is very higher level so it is saying basically when you have inflation you tend to have employment this is a general uh, what is called as the conclusion which is drawn so as the inflationary policies are adopted by government it will lead to generation of employment okay this is what phillips curve is saying but this is only true in short term okay again i am telling you inflation and unemployment have a stable and inverse relationship true lower the economy's rate of unemployment more rapidly wages will rise obviously correct but it is again applicable only in short run this was propounded by friedman milton friedman he got nobel prize in 1976 so if he said then and there in 1968 that it will fail in long run because and i quote his statement inflationary policies cannot lead to generation of employment it will always lead to unemployment in longer run so phillips curve is no longer the gold standard it is used barely and it is used in modified form but since upsc is fond of asking such questions that's why i mentioned it anyway uh, i hope you enjoyed this introductory video so do spread the word as much as you can and please be a part of this education revolution i'll really appreciate that Uh, join the unacademy revolution and do follow me on unacademy and do hit the thumbs up if you really like the video and these are the urls where you can ask your query and these are the twitter handles and do spread the education for all revolution and thank you for watching the tutorial have an awesome day